Okay, this video is, are blacks and whites doomed to hypertension? Okay, um, when I was a resident, medical student resident, you know, I was sort of taught that black people just have lots of hypertension and there's not much you can do about it. So unknown cause, essential hypertension, and it's really sad. And lots of them at a young age end up in kidney failure and have strokes. And what are you going to do? They're probably salt reten retainers and there's not much you could do. And Caucasians, they just get lots of hypertension as they get older and nobody knows why. And it's sad. And these are the recommended pills. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what's really going on. Hypertension in blacks is very common, super common. And I can tell you, I've walked through dialysis facilities sometimes where almost every single patient was black and had a lot of hypertension, a lot of diabetes, a lot of autoimmune disease in women. I've seen a lot of lupus as a cause of hypertension. Um, now, this is just a paper here showing, you know, from 2018, showing blacks had a very high incidence of stroke related to hypertension, about three times the rate of uh, Caucasians in this study and a couple studies that actually it mentions. And if only hypertension could be controlled, they'd have much less strokes, much less uh, kidney failure and death from heart disease as well. Okay, so here's where it starts to get interesting. There was a research paper from 1929 by this guy Donison in the Lancet Journal where he checked the blood pressures of a whole bunch of people in Kenya, okay? And there was like no hypertension. <laughs> if it's genetic, how come there wasn't a bunch of hypertension in Kenya? Okay, because it's not really genetic, all right? It's, we're gonna, the next, I'm gonna go through the next paper, which is gonna be great. We're gonna summarize the whole history of sodium and hypertension. But, okay, what does this one show? It shows, uh, in a hospital with 1,800 patients admitted, there was not a single case of hypertension, not one. Um, they also then talked about autopsy studies. They almost never see a hypertrophied heart unless there's some other disease that, uh, happening there. Hyperpiesi is just a way of saying chronic essential hypertension. And so they said it certainly is a disease of civilization because it, it's just not occurring uh, where they eat the old fashioned plant-based diet. Okay, next slide I think is really good. All right, so this paper here, Salt and Hypertension, an Evolutionary Perspective. Author's name is Vachihi Batuman. So you can easily look this one up if you want. Um, and uh, it's in the Journal of Hypertension from 2012. All right, so this will be quite interesting. So what's the point? There's tons of sodium in processed food. Processed food is a multi-billion dollar industry. Lots of sodium is used for preserving meats, for making meat taste better, for the seasonings on meat and animal product foods. Um, they put a lot of sodium into all kinds of processed food, even into soda pop, there's sodium in milk. All right, so anyways, the point about this from a so-called evolutionary historical perspective is humans used to live with almost, with no added salt, zero to their diet. For almost all of recorded history, other than the last 200 years, sodium has been very scarce. That's where all these terms come from, like the Romans paid a salarium, a salary, uh, paid in salt. That's what, you know, the word salt. Okay, um, hypertension keeps going up and up and up because people are eating more and more sodium. Um, okay, so looking at this part, you know, he talks about how rare salt used to be. And then he talks about a native populations without salt added to their diet. They're usually eating around 250 milligrams or less of sodium per day. And you can look at the Yanomamo in uh, Amazon jungle here. The Yanomami, they eat, it's thought, 250 milligrams. I think I recall a paper where they were eating, they thought, less than that. And there's no hypertension. Zero. Saltless society. Zero hypertension. Where they're eating salt and they're eating plants, okay? It just doesn't even happen. How much more could you want? Almost everybody gets ends up getting hypertensive in a Western society where they eat high sodium and almost no one gets hypertensive where they don't. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that um, in terms of a clear cut result. Okay, so they said that humans are now eating, you know, depending on the amount, 50, 70 times more sodium than they're supposed to. What's not widely recognized is when sodium goes up in the diet from meat and processed food, potassium comes down because potassium, P for potassium, P for plants. And the other little secret is 
right in the center of chlorophyll. Take a look at a picture of it. Right in the center of it is magnesium. Those are the vasodilators. Potassium and magnesium are the vasodilators. So when you eat the plants, you get the stuff that lowers your blood pressure, keeps you healthy. When you eat the meat and the processed food, you get the sodium with the lack of the other two, and you end up hypertensive, fat, and sick. Um, I show you this, though, because there's a lot of liars out there. This guy, Taubes, is one of the biggest liars, writing all these papers saying hypertension's no big, not that big a deal. There's another guy who's become pretty well-known now on the Internet. He's a pharmacology PhD or something, researcher, and he's writing all these, he's writing books that um, say that, oh, it's good to increase your sodium. These are not true. I'm letting you know that, and you can read this article for yourself. That's why I'm giving you this entire reference, so you can look this up if you're curious about it. I can also tell you this guy, McGregor, is good. And I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you, in terms of philosophy of sodium, there are the people who really think it's a big deal and sodium is quite bad. That would include Walter Kempner, MD, genius of nutrition, and myself, okay, and this Dr. McGregor, all right? Now, there's the intermediate camp. That would be like Dr. McDougall and Dr. Pritikin. And so with Dr. McDougall and Dr. Pritikin, where they're coming from is that sodium reduction, you know, just by avoiding processed food, you dramatically lower your sodium. And by eating plant foods, you dramatically increase your potassium and your um, magnesium. And that guy, Richard Moore, MD, PhD, the guy who wrote High Blood Pressure Solution, I have that in my list of recommended books, which I made like about a week ago. That's the best book ever written on, on hypertension and on you know, cell function, the membrane ion pumps, and it helps you understand the brain as well as hypertension. But the bottom line is this, um, hypertension, sodium is a really big deal, but if you increase your potassium, you decrease the effect of the sodium. So that's one, one issue. And I think what McDougall and Pritikin are sort of saying is, you get most of the benefit just by getting rid of the meat and the processed food and eating plant foods. And just in so doing, your sodium comes down enough, your potassium and magnesium come, come up enough, that you're going to get pretty good results. And that's nice. But where I'm coming from is I'm not seeking to be good. I don't want to just be healthier than the average person. I want to be the best I can be. I don't want little silent strokes in my brain like I see hundreds of every day, okay? And I want to be as good as I can be. And so what I mean by that is I want to try to perfect my diet to the extent that's possible. So I want to figure out what's the best way to handle this. And I think the best way to handle it is, like I said before, you know, be like Adam and Eve, but with indoor heating and plumbing. And so I don't want any, any extra sodium if I can avoid it. What McDougall says is, hey, lots of people, they're not going to eat plant foods unless you put, let them put more salt on their food to make it taste better. Okay, that's fine. If that's what some people need, that's fine. Because, you know, most people, they're quite ignorant and they're just like, um, it's hard to get them to do anything. So that's fine. But... I'm going through this epidemiology data, research data, to show you that there's good evidence for the real low salt path. And I actually personally think that it makes your brain function better because everything in your brain is dependent on these ion pumps, all right? You know, the average neuron in your brain uses two-thirds of its energy to run the potassium sodium ATPAs, uh, membrane ion pump, okay? So I don't want to mess with that. I want to give it what it uh, appears designed to do. Okay, so the Amazon, the Yanomami and the Amazon, only about 250 milligrams of sodium per day per this study, less from my other reading about them. Um, there's a guy in 1995 here, Derek uh, Denton, did a chimpanzee study, and he found when he feeds the chimps a high-salt diet, they all get hypertension. When he takes them off the high-sodium diet, their um, hypertension goes away. And that, another thing that um, Kepner said is, you don't get that big a difference if you drop sodium, let's say, from... 10 grams a day to three grams a day. He says where you really see a difference is when you go from, let's say, about three grams a day down to 500 milligrams a day or even less. And, and Kempner had some of his patients on as low as, I think, like about a, you know 150 milligrams a day of sodium, really, really low. But he followed them closely. So a regular person should not do that on their own. But under close medical supervision, he was getting patients with systolics of 250, you know, down to 120 and whatnot. So he had a longer way to go, and he was much more meticulous in that sense. They've shown in rats, you know, the Wistar research rats, that they'll get fibrous tissue, uh, you know, it's being accumulating in their heart and their kidneys, uh, which is damaging to their heart and their kidneys, even without that much hypertension. And one of the points I'll make, I'm, I'm going to do a separate lecture in the future about the microvascular changes thickening in the capillary basement membrane due to hypertension and diabetes, which is a big deal to me with regard to the brain because... 
it progressively uh, lessens the ability for oxygen to be delivered to the brain tissue, leading to neuronal cell death, dementia. All right, so um, I think hypertension is a big deal. All right, and then here's the other thing. Here's the typical academic joke you'll get coming out of the Ivy League schools. That's why you have to remember this. You're on your own when it comes to this stuff. Almost no doctor knows this stuff. And the big Ivy universities that set all the guidelines, they don't know what they're talking about. The DASH study, you know, dietary approach to stop hypertension. Look at what a joke this is. The uh, intermediate sodium reduction diet was six grams per day. The low sodium diet was four grams per day when we're designed to probably eat about, let's say 200 milligrams a day. So, I mean, it's like orders of magnitude more than that, okay? That's, um, it's, it's so high, it's not even funny. So what I'm saying is basically the research is close to worthless. You know, if you, if you automatically assume that people are such morons and that there's nothing you could do, you're never going to get good results. And that's why I think, you know, if you want to study athletic performance, study national champions and, and Olympic champions. If you want to, you know, study a population that reduces hypertension, study ones like the Yanomama with none. Study somebody like Kempner with the best results ever. That's how you really learn stuff, okay? And so the whole point of it is our bodies are designed for an environment where there's no added salt, which is probably around 200, 250 milligrams a day. And we're also designed to be eating tons of potassium and magnesium per day. Richard Moore said that he thinks you need to eat at least five times as much potassium as you do sodium, which happens automatically on a plant-based diet, but I would think it's even more than that. Um, the good news is it's easy to do. Just don't add salt to your food, eat a plant-based diet, and you should make fantastic progress, and then avoid all these fats. That's the other thing I've seen getting a lot of people stuck in the rut of not being able to lower their cholesterol as much as they want, not being able to lower their blood pressure as much as they want, is they're still eating a lot of fat. All this nonsense about you need, you know, omega-3s. That's I, I, I personally think that's BS, just so you know. And all these other high-fat foods that are recommended, I don't like them. I don't think nuts are going to help your cardiovascular health. None of these oils are all bad, uh, in my opinion. Um, I would stay away from all this high fat stuff, avocados, fat makes your blood thick and it increases, um, your, uh, blood pressure. Okay. So McGregor, his research, uh, references here. If you want to look up McGregor, McGregor's book is here. He's real good on hypertension. I've, I've read his work. Um, Denton's research on the chimpanzees is here. The Yanomamos in purple. So anyways, the whole point of this was, you know, you know, modern, uh, blacks in America, they tend to eat high sodium diet with a lot of fat. Okay. And Americans, the other Americans, the Caucasians, um, they also do the same thing. They're eating lots of meat, lots of oil, lots of sodium. So they just get hypertensive. And, um, I'm going to talk about this in a separate lecture, but you know, the sooner you get your act together, the better, because the longer you go on with being markedly hypertensive, diabetic, and all these things, the more likely you're going to start having irreversible problems. So anyways, I thought this was good. So you get the truth on sodium and you can't be tricked into eating high salt diet.